Guys, Miles here again with uh, Point Control, this time demonstrating it with two finger devices, which are now called FCUs, thanks to Ratcatcher for his acronyms, it was better than whatever I was calling it, so these are your finger control units. Uh, again, be another short video, just showing the operation with two fingers, as well as some of the knobs. There were some questions about how do you turn dials and things like that. So we're just going to show that briefly. For the for those of you that haven't seen a point control video before, what it is it's just a it's a way to manipulate the mouse in a 3D environment that's very intuitive. Um, you have three buttons, or these are the older um, passive touch sensors, but there'll be three buttons that representing your left, center, and right mouse buttons on each hand. Okay. With that being said, let's get started. All right, here we are in the cockpit of the F-18. We're at our start screen. You can see your pointing devices work on that also. The, um, the ratio is a little bit different because that's a 2D image compared to a 3D image of the cockpit. But you can see how both of the pointers interact with each other. You can see as I raise one up, it appears. I lower one, the other one appears. Right now I have it set so it's the higher of the two is the one that's recognized, uh, theory being that hands around the controls you lift your hand to make the adjustments it doesn't mean if this hand is up here doing something you can still use this one even though it's lower because it's in the field of view so it's basically whichever's in the field of view you have control if they're both in the field of view it's going to be whichever one is higher and we can change that to whatever works out based on feedback all right so we're going to go ahead and get started over here here we are we're in the uh the uh, cat one on the stennis and you can see how both of our buttons both of our controllers can make any adjustments that you would like um, you know, nothing nothing really different there however the um, that before I forget in my lunch bar back down uh, however the knobs which I didn't show last time I'm gonna show them this time they work just like the mouse we're gonna left click on the knob and then bring it down to lower it up to make it brighter so there's our adjustments I went a little too far turned it off so but you can you know pretty much adjust whatever you want again either hand will make the adjustments the um, cabin lights same thing instrument panel lights brighter go to your control layer which kind of is interesting because it kind of follows your um, your hand and then Quite a few of the buttons work differently. Um, you can see on the, and what's kind of intuitive about this, it's funny, you find yourself doing things that you would in real life. With this button, it's a little bit hard to reach with this hand. You can still reach it though, so I can put the switch up. But it's almost easier to reach across with this hand and lower it. Now this button, as I said, I can lower it and move my hand away from it and it'll still function until I release the, the switch. So let's go ahead and open it again. If I pull off now, well, it just continues to open. It's just a one press thing. But I'm going to put the, uh, now you can see on um, the 3D plane, right now it's projected on the deck. That's why it looked like it was jumping around. Your mouse would do the same thing. All right, so now I'm lowering it. I can move my hand off, and it's still there until I release the button. So it kind of traps your key, key command. Again, it's jumping around because I'm, uh, close it up away. Okay. Um, other than that, that's uh, that's the basic functionality with the two controllers. We'll get and take off. All right, airborne. Now you can see all we have to do is move our hand a little bit, put the gear up because that's actually where it is. We could do our flaps. Same thing. Flaps to auto. S 